Hello, I'm Laura Jensen with Maishon Preservation, where we only work with the registered Maishon pig. I'm here today to show you how we castrate piglets. Our amazing vet, Dr. Brown, is here setting up our castration station, and we'll show you how we get it done here. So take a look and let me know what you think. All right, here we go. So there's a certain way that we like to hold them. I like to hold both legs, and if you'll hold them down like that, it gives Aaron room to work. And then we spray them off with alcohol. And we're lucky that these pigs aren't that dirty. If you can get both fingers underneath them and push them up, and you make your incision. And you don't want to go too deep because you can cut into the scrotal uh, sack. And then once you get them going, you can basically pop them up. Once you pop it up, you grab it and you pull. And you do the same thing with the other one. Oh my God. This one needs a little bit bigger hole. Some people will do these pigs like this when they're really large. You don't want to do it when they're much bigger or full grown because you can have hernias. And then this is aluminum spray, if I can get the spray right. And what it does, it's like a band-aid. There you go. That's it. All right, ask questions if you have them. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. We're gonna get back to it. You wanna film another one? Sure, let's keep going. And then you can edit. Yep. Put them all together. I'm deal with my eyes closed somehow. <laughs> you're still looking okay well guys also once you castrate them and they're castrated they need to have a tetanus uh, vaccine uh, pigs can die from tetanus and they get tetanus through open wounds and this is an open wound Pain management wise, um, they could use some pain meds afterwards, but when they're this young, usually they um, recover quite well within a 24 hours. Go back to being normal. Um, and then sometimes you can only find one. If you come across a pig with only one testicle, do not attempt to castrate it because you'll forget that there's only one and you'll, he can also still reproduce. So there could be a second one in there, only one is dropped? Yes. Okay. There's only one. Abort! Here, I'm gonna spray it back. Tagging. We'll do that in a minute. Two, one, two, spray, clean it down. And I'm just cleaning them with alcohol. Try to get the poop off. Keep my thumb holding down, pushing them up. My fingers on the top of the back, make my incision. Once you do a couple hundred of these, you'll get really good at figuring out how deep to go. And see right there, I don't know if you can see, but I kind of went through the scrotal stack. And if I had gone any deeper, the testicle itself would have popped through there. It's not bad if that happens, it just makes it a little trickier. Let me make this one a little bigger. The smaller the holes you can make, the better off, because it's less, <laughs> less likely to herniate organs. Sometimes they're like right. Dude. 
need of these, though. You sure you don't want him to be a breeder? <laughs> Can be. Do you think it'll drop in time? Yeah, there's only one over here. I mean, I, I guess at this point it's either breeder or roaster early, right? Because you don't want something you're not going to breed running around with one nut or... No, we would have to go... Um, his other one's probably in, internally. And we can get it. Usually they get stuck up here in the kidney area. Um, so you can let them get bigger. It's probably not going to drop. So you can let them get bigger. And we can go in there and find it and surgically castrate him, but he's gonna, he could breed girls while you're waiting to get him castrated. But he's gonna be Food? 50 to 60 pounds at that point. Do we want to uh, manhandle that to castrate it? Uh, we would have to knock him out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think the better answer personally is I would take uh, the one that did not drop and I would uh, make him a feeder or put him into food. Uh -huh. And mainly because if this is the case, and this is the only one I've seen like this after hundreds of piglets, by the way, um, I just don't want that to carry forward. Correct. In other words, um, just genetically, uh, I would pull him out of the gene pool and put him in the meat pool yep. so that we don't have to... Have um, more piggies with one yeah customer. experience that in our breeding program or for you and our customer. So okay, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, just get tightness. The lot is more guys. Done a great job. You've got you really done a good job. This is looking good. We're getting somewhere. We're aren't we? getting somewhere. Oh, you told her to go grab one more because you were. Yeah, because one didn't make it. Because I just I just don't think I need the boars. We've got a shit ton of boars. We do. But you know, it's been a boar heavy year. I don't know if you've seen that in. Um, your other clients, but I've, I've known several people with goats and pigs that it's been uh, been heavy. the last one. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> they are they are so overly dramatic sometimes. Are other breeds like that? Yes. They're like breeds because they're gonna die. He's peeing on me. <laughs> He's like, I'm so relaxed, I'm gonna urinate. She's like, no. Oh, she's like, God, ah, you're a big one. This one's got some fight in him. That is the mad pig sound. You want me to let that fall to the side? You definitely want to get the poop out of your surgical field. <laughs> okay. One, two. And I am pushing pretty hard to get them out. So don't be scared that you're pushing too hard. And then we do want to give them their tetanus when they're um, done castrating. This is what we use. Um, it is for pigs. So you have your syringe. You pull the needle off. Do not put it in your mouth. Put your syringe in the top of the tank and pull it up to two mils or whatever your instructions say on the bottle. And it, it is I am. I am. So the way we give pig shots, we usually give it in their necks right behind their ears. So you take your neck, don't get bit, and inject and push down. You don't technically have to worry about hitting uh, blood vessels when you're at the top side because they're jugular veins are right here on either side of their neck, and that's where the main blood supply is. So
So as long as you're not stabbing them in the front of their neck, you're okay. Okay, Piggy. Enjoy your day. <laughs> That's it. Oh, let's give them their shots. And I'm going to make it look super easy because I've been doing it for a long time. And it doesn't matter if you do right or left side of the neck. Um, you just need to get it in the pig. You do want to vaccinate up inside the um, behind the ear area because uh, the more places you poke pigs, the more your meat can be um, discarded at processing or they have cutouts um, from where the vaccines were given. You can see those post-mortem. Thanks for watching. Yes, thanks for watching. Enjoy your pigs. See you next time.